All right. So I'd like to talk about some interesting response patterns that we observed in pointer origin tasks. So this uh, talks about spatial orientation and some interesting effect that we observed. Before we go diving into it, I'd like to thank my wonderful collaborators and students, Katarina Stefanova and Alex Pizan. This was done at the iSpace Lab near Vancouver, Canada, although right now I'm on sabbatical. Okay, so uh, point on to task. So what are they? Some of you might know them. Um, so why am I interested in them? And uh, instead of citing a lot of papers, I'd like to actually try this out. So attention, this is the interactive part. Um, so uh, basically, the task goes like that. I'll describe to you some kind of path. So this could be something like this. And I'll ask you to point back to the origin where you came from. Uh, so don't feel like you have to move around. I'll ask you to simply point back uh, using your hands where you think the origin of locomotion is. Okay, like that. Uh, I'll give you a verbal description of the path. And at the end, I'll ask you to point to point, And uh, then we see that we can replicate the literature as we've seen is quite important. So feel free to close your eyes if you like. Uh, so very simple, imagine walking forwards two meters. Then imagine to take a turn to the left, so counterclockwise, 60 degrees. And then imagine walking forwards for another three meters. And now point. Like literally everybody, and please, uh, everybody please. And keep your hand out uh, so other people can see it. Now, uh, okay, now look around and see how much we agree or disagree. So this is basically about the replication issue. So, so you wonder, I mean, what is going on there? So why don't we agree? I mean, we're all scientists, um, so we should know better in a way. Also, why is this task uh, much harder than you would think? Because it's kind of the most simple navigation spatial cognition task that is not quite trivial. Also, what, what can we learn about this uh, in terms of like, what's going on in our brain while we try to do this. Um, if you understand this and get this right, I mean, you don't find these errors if people physically look around, but in virtual reality, which is another topic I'm uh, deeply into, you find a lot of these issues that people cannot agree whether to point there or there or there or there. Um, and so one of the questions I ask how here is how our behavior and spatial cognition really depends on how we present things and also how we respond, what kind of options we give you. So here, this was an embodied pointing measure. Is it easier if you just ask you to verbally respond because you're not tied to your body as much? You have more freedom in your mind than your body in a way. So here's kind of what's going on. Uh, so this is kind of the task uh, using a similar setup. I've got the length uh, a bit off. But basically, everybody was supposed to point to their left. That would have been the correct response. Um, however, what we observed a lot is that people point to the opposite way, so left-right hemisphere errors. Uh, up to 100% do that sometimes, so some of you did, that's totally okay. Even though this wasn't exactly what we asked you to do. Uh, so, so you wonder, like, what's going on? Why do people do these uh, seemingly bizarre errors? And here's the kind of prevailing opinion of what might have happened. So in people's minds, uh, when they imagine this path, this is kind of what they seem to be doing. So it's almost like they they update the path, but not the orientation. So they kind of point back to here, whereas this would be the proper response. So somehow it's really hard to update these terms without physically performing them. And there's lots of interesting research on that and trying to use this. So if people point back in a way it makes sense, there's my little PowerPoint illustration. If you imagine that they don't really update the heading, that's still the path. Now, in some pilot tests and also in the study that I'm going to show, um, oh, sorry, first of all, so these are sometimes called non-turners because they don't really update the term, whereas the other ones are called turners because they kind of do the right thing, they update the term. Now, in pilot studies and the study that I'll show in a moment, we observed some other interesting uh, uh, responses. Oops, it's a little bit cut off, so here people always point to the back either the correct hemisphere or in the wrong hemisphere. But you also observe some people who actually pointed forward, which doesn't really make much sense, you would think. Uh, so here, one interpretation of why they might point forward is, well, they took the easy way out. They don't really update the, their own position or orientation at all. They just point from the beginning to the end point, which is not exactly what we asked, but it seems to happen. Uh, so we for lack of a better name, we just call them non-mover. That doesn't mean that's exactly what's going on in their brain, but it's a nice short. And we also observe people who point in the other direction. 
Uh, we call him Spinner for because that's kind of the only way you can imagine what's going on. So basically, they plot the opposite uh, quadrant as if once arriving at the end position, they turn around, face the position, and point. Not sure that this is what really what's going on, but uh, we do observe them in repeated studies. So. To run a study here, what you wanted to do is to try and run an online point of origin task where you have a multiple choice response. So the instructions are verbal instructions, um, just because it's easy to do. So we ran, ran out uh, not that many people yet because we're still improving on it. We did these exact uh, conditions. People never saw the top down view, of course. So left or right, different turning angles. And we wanted to compare two different response types. One was a verbal response time, so simply, uh, so simply asking them front left, back uh, left, and so on, just basically the main quadrants. And the idea was if you use a more textual response, that maybe it's easier because it triggers more abstract thinking. So you basically don't really have to imagine your own locomotive, you can just imagine whatever mannequin or mental representation updating. So we uh, figured there might be a lower reference frame conflict between your own physical representation and the response you uh, are asked to do. And then we compared this with a more pictogram response because it's online, so we couldn't really ask them to physically turn and point and so on. So this is kind of the best we could come up with easily. So it's a top-down representation. But the idea was, well, maybe this triggers a little bit more embodied response types. And what we know from the embodied response times is uh, that there's a larger reference frame conflict between your physical orientation, you still know you're facing this direction, and the to be imagined orientation. And what that leads to, just like now for some people, here's errors. So people uh, fail to update the heading or do some other interesting errors. So we would uh, observe fewer correct or turner responses here. Um, lots of prior work. One that I'd like to mention specifically I think Marius might be in the other room over there in the spatial cognition session, but that is one of the uh, examples. So there they uh, had similar verbal instructions in the embodied response mode. They literally ask people to just produce the term uh, that they need to do, so very embodied response. And what they found here, so that's the, uh, the red uh, data point here, is slightly different, but about almost anybody uh, fails to update the heading here. Uh, but kind of uh, responded as if still facing the original orientation, so a classic non-terminal response. Um, because it's, and the idea is this was based on their perceived, the actual heading instead of the to be imagined heading. Whereas if you use the verbal response, so they just said, okay, left 60 degrees, for example, then just about everybody got it right, so this uh, one here. So there weren't any uh, figures to update the heading. So the idea was then, uh, for our study, the prediction is, okay, if you use just text as a response, like this one here, then people should do fairly well. We should uh, all have these kind of turning responses that properly update and then response based off this kind of imagined or content heading because there's a little reference frame conflict uh, with the body. And the other prediction was, well, if these pictorial representations really trigger more embodied kind of thinking or responses, then there should be a stronger reference frame conflict, maybe a stronger stimulus response and compatibility effects. And so we should have less turtles, so less correct responses and more failures to update the heading or some kind of other <coughs> strategies. Okay, so what did we find? So here's again the comparison for the verbal response. We expected a lot of turners. And in our study, uh, we didn't quite find that. So we still found, uh, oops, oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, I should just use this one again. Um, so we found much less than 100% turner responses. So still a, a fair amount here of turners. But we also found some non-turners in the verbal condition, which we didn't quite expect. Uh, there were a lot of uh, what we call non-mover uh, responses of so people who point to the frontal hemisphere, still the right hemisphere, uh, the correct hemisphere, uh, but to the front, which is hard to explain. And even some spinner responses, the one that pointed exactly the opposite direction as you should do, which is really kind of hard to understand why they would do that. And um, so basically, the text condition, so we did observe turner responses, but a lot less than we expected. And we observed these strange frontal pointings 
which, well, you wonder what, what this really means. Now, in the Abamia study, uh, there was an embodied response mode where people were predominantly non turners In our study, uh, slightly different effects. So we did observe more of these non turner responses in the pictorial response mode. So it means it seems like it might be a bit more embodied, but not fully there. Also, less turner response, so less correct responses. So probably more of a reference frame conflict going on. And uh, again, more non Google responses, but especially for the textual response. And some, uh, some of these spinner responses, so finding the exactly the uh, uh, opposite direction, which you might wonder what that really means. So in summary, uh, so we observed more of these hemisphere errors and less correct turn responses in the pictogram of the textual condition as expected. So it seems like these pictograms really triggered something that was a little bit more embodied than just a textual description, which is interesting. So in a way, even though it's an online survey, it kind of works in this way, probably because it induced a stronger reference frame conflict. And you wonder, well, why are these uh, still a lot of difference? I mean, obviously, we use an online site, computer response, multiple joys, different tasks, uh, slightly different stimuli, different pointing methods. So, so this could explain for a lot of differences, probably. So, but going back to our main idea, so prediction was that uh, we should find mostly terminal responses for the text response. Uh, this wasn't quite the case. Uh, I mean, there's a trend in this direction, but not exactly uh, as we expected. Oops. Uh, and uh, a lot of this can uh, be related to doing an online study. So we did also a parallel in the lab study with less people to kind of understand what's going on. And obviously, for the online study, you have less control over the testing environment, the stimulus presentation. Uh, responses are less consistent overall. It's really harder to control for effects of distraction, effort, uh, intention, honesty, consistency. You don't know what they're doing, why they're doing the task. Um, the data can be harder to interpret because you can't really ask them afterwards. That's one of the reasons why we like to do. Uh, parallel in the lab study with the same, the same stimuli, so we have at least a few people where we can follow up on that. Also, you might wonder, I mean, given that it's an online study, maybe what is really going on is that people don't put as much effort in it. It's clearly harder to imagine uh, self-updating um, than to just do a uh, point from the origin to, uh, so basically, this uh, task is probably the hardest uh, mentally because you really have to update your imagined update to your orientation and position. So maybe they just opted for the simpler response because they can. Nobody controls them and it's an online study. They are not really, really that responsible. So that could be kind of a bias by switching from in lab to online. Um, so you get the same prediction basically. Uh, where we said, okay, if the pictorial stimulus is more embodied and this is stronger reference frame conflict than textual responses, we should have less correct responses and more failures to update, which is exactly the direction of the effect that we observe. Uh, so less correct responses, more non turner failures to update, um, as predicted by an increased reference frame conflict, even though this is all online. So it's not really embodied, but it triggers some of the same processes. Um, What's really surprising is how many of these non-mover and anterior pointings we observed here. Uh, so as I mentioned, this could really be re related to the demand characteristics of the online uh, survey where there's really no control, they can do whatever they want and nobody's going to check up on them. Uh, so in some, we did observe all these kind of different strategies and there's a lot of open questions, like what really happens? So do people that produce these left-right hemisphere errors really fail to update their heading? Could there be other explanations? Why do they do this? Is it really the difficulty of the task? Do they just opt for a simpler, less demanding strategy? And same for the non-movers. Is that really what they're doing? Or could there be an alternate strategy? So same reason here. Um, especially for these spinners, which doesn't really uh, seem to make much sense. So what do they really do? Why they, do they point this away? And they do, so uh, we replicated this a little bit. Uh, it doesn't look like it's a misunderstanding of the instructions. Um, I mean, there might be some alternative explanations. So for example, if they would drastically overestimate the term, then it might make sense to point forward. But 
I mean, here in this study, we actually use verbal description, so it's hard to imagine that people misestimate 90 degrees as a 150 degree turn. So it doesn't quite explain things. So in conclusion, uh, so clearly these pictorial stimuli or response modes actually yielded more non terms and tails to update heading than the textual response as predicted. We did find these four different response uh, types. And where we want to go with that is really to, to use these kind of tasks and see, okay, can we elicit specific response uh, patterns? For example, by varying different stimuli, switching from verbal to visual, virtuality, we uh, tried a lot of that, multi-sensory, until we find something that uh, replicates a Wilberg performance where everybody's a turn. Uh, does it, how much does it really depend on the instruction, the response form, and these kind of things? Running parallel studies to these online studies and in terms of applied perspective, what we like to do is use these kind of fairly simple or seemingly simple ideas and paradigms as a test bed for improving virtuality telepresence interfaces. Where well, often enough, you just have the visual image of the drone flying the robot over there, uh, remote uh, vacation, video conferencing. And what we really like is to be, uh, for people to have this kind of embodied sensation where they are while we simulate some motions. And if we would. Uh, get there, then uh, this might also argue that our results will transfer from the lab into the real world, which is a big issue in a lot of psychology and other experiments, of course. All right, that's it. Thank you very much.